bus passes to get back. Mario Mercado is on a frustrating mission. I would do it, no question about it. Trying to get South Florida's homeless into shelters. They're being offered places to stay and they won't go. It's not a question of comfort, but of life or death. One Mario knows firsthand. He almost lost his own life sleeping on the streets. I walked out with a, a black eye, one broken rib, uh, and that was mild. Nationwide, attacks against the homeless are on the rise. And just like the beating death of Norris Gaynor two years ago in Fort Lauderdale, teenagers, even kids, are often to blame. I'm sure in a 10-year-old's mind, somehow it's my fault. John D'Amico was attacked by two 10-year-olds last year in Daytona. One of them dropped a concrete block on his head. Out of more than 160 unprovoked attacks on the homeless nationwide last year, more than half, 64 percent, were at the hands of teens. They are singled out, they are hunted, and they are killed. Nowhere is it worse than in Florida, where Sean Canoni runs a homeless shelter. He and other homeless advocates say internet fight videos have turned homeless beatings into a game. And welcome to another exciting edition of Bomb Hunter. So they're fighting back with their own video. Homeless people have the same hopes and dreams and rights as you. It's part of a week-long pilot program in Miami-Dade Public Schools, developed by the county's Homeless Trust. Does everybody have their homeless essays? And designed as a kind of sensitivity training for students from kindergarten through high school. When we see it on YouTube or, or whatever, like on the news, it doesn't really strike us as much. So, oh, it's another day, it's another beating. You've got to break the cycle. The only way you break the cycle is to get in and sensitize people. The goal is to bring the program to classrooms across the country so more students learn to see the homeless. And thank you for letting me share, okay? As human. Kelly Cobiella, CBS News, Hollywood, Florida.